gentlemen, please welcome your host this afternoon, Ms. Carmencita Toledo. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the new normal, the Ramon Magsaysay Award in Cyberspace. I am your host, Carmencita Toledo, but you can call me Chiclet. As the Ramon Magsaysay Award strengthens its mission of celebrating greatness of spirit and transformative leadership, both offline and online, the foundation under the program called Ramon Magsaysay Transformative Leadership Institute, or RMTLI, is hosting this very first webinar yes. of the foundation. In this unprecedented period of global pandemic and many uncertainties, the Ramon Magsaysay Award Foundation would like to focus on and herald our hopes and aspirations for a better normal, side by side with some concerns that are happening now and will be affecting the next generation. Six months ago in January, before the global lockdown happened, the foundation led by our dearly departed president, Ms. Karna Bellia, organized a conversation on youth mental wellness with eminent leaders and pioneers in the field of psychology and other mental wellness experts, practitioners, and advocates addressing teen suicide. This core of experts, and we like to call them now as our friends of the foundation, led by Dr. Lourdes Hanikarandang, founder of MLAC, or Mindfulness, Love, and Compassion, Institute for Psychosocial Services, and Ms. Dina Paterno, president and founding trustee of the Beacon School. The core of experts are here with us now and later, they will join our panel during the open forum. In that face-to-face -face dialogue, our Pagsaysay awardee from South Korea, Mr. Kim Jong-ki, joined the discussion virtually. And today, we are very fortunate that Mr. Kim Jong-ki will be one of our principal speakers with his team from Seoul. The discourse on teen suicide and youth mental wellness is really becoming more urgent and vital. With the majority of the youth population turning to the internet and exploring cyberspace for social interaction, cyberbullying is lurking around the corner and quickly invading spaces that were once safe for them. Cyberbullying among teens has become a growing and very real concern to parents, to educators, to the police, and to all of us who share that same space now. Thankfully, there are individuals and organizations who have sort of found the right vaccine for this seemingly intractable virus or problem that has invaded cyberspace and affecting our future generation. And we have them on board in this webinar, again, led by our Magsaysay um, awardee from South Korea, Mr. Kim Jong-ki and his organization, the Blue Tree Foundation. The speakers we have invited for this webinar have created initiatives at counteracting cyberbullying among the youth. Again, welcome everyone to this webinar, protecting our youth from cyberbullying. We really hope to make this webinar interesting, instructional, and really meaningful of your attendance of your afternoon. To help us achieve this, we are very fortunate to have as our webinar moderator, a pillar in the field of advertising, media, communications, the culture, and the arts. She is also one of the country's staunchest advocates of children's rights and child protection. And we are very fortunate to have her lead now the Ramon Magsaysay Award Foundation as our interim president. Friends, please help me welcome, as I now turn over the grid, to Ms. Emily Abrera. Thank you, Chiclet. Good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to the Ramon Magsaysay Awards first foray into digital events, co-presented by the Ramon Magsaysay Transformative Leadership Institute and the Blue Tree Foundation. Many of you are familiar, I'm sure, with the word Ubuntu. It's an African philosophy that often is translated as I am because we are. More broadly, it means the belief in a universal bond of sharing that connects all of humanity. Since the Ramon Magsaysay Award Foundation started bestowing Asia's premier prize in 1958, we have celebrated the greatness of spirit of over 300 individuals and organizations, all 
demonstrated Ubuntu. The Ramon Magsaysay awardees have selflessly shared innovative solutions through their work and their life to make Asia and the world a better place. Today, we are delighted to see a multitude of faces in our Zoom grid um, from various places in the Philippines. We are joined by delegates from Misamis, Marawi City, Cagayan de Oro, Cebu, uh, Victoria, San Negros Occidental, Palo Leite, Tanawan Batangas, and Bacoor Cavite. We also welcome all our Facebook audiences from India, from Bangladesh, and Indonesia. Your presence this afternoon is testament to our shared humanity, our Ubuntu. And finally, we welcome our friends from South Korea, led by 2019 Ramon Magsaysay awardee, Mr. Kim Jong-ki. He was elected to receive Asia's premier prize for his quiet courage in transforming private grief into a mission to protect Korea's youth from the scourge of bullying and violence. For his unstinting dedication to the goal of instilling among the young the values of self-esteem, tolerance, and mutual respect, and is effectively mobilizing all sectors of the country in a nationwide drive. A drive that has transformed both policy and behavior towards building a gentler, nonviolent society. Mr. Kim is the founder of the Blue Tree Foundation, formerly known as the Foundation for the Prevention of Youth Violence. The Blue Tree Foundation is the first organized effort in South Korea to address school violence as a systemic social problem affecting students, families, schools, and the communities at large. When Mr. Kim established the Blue Tree Foundation, there were no avenues yet in South Korea for victims and parents like him to file a complaint and seek help. There was little public awareness of the scale and the seriousness of school violence that even the term was not recognized. School violence was regarded as mere fighting, which of course, just like here, was considered normal among teenagers. Even schools and the government didn't want public attention on the issue. Victims and their parents were hesitant or scared, or they just couldn't speak out. For over two decades, the Blue Tree Foundation has carried out wide ranging anti-bullying campaigns, which has included seminars, rallies, concerts, and films. It also operated a hotline that now takes 30 to 50 calls daily. And they have the capacity to dispatch staff to respond to urgent cases. They have also lobbied for needed government policy and legislation. In 2004, the foundation helped to lobby passage of a law in the South Korean legislature on the prevention and handling of school violence. In 2010, the Blue Tree Foundation opened an institute offering both on-site and online certificate training programs on youth violence prevention, detection, and management that have since certified thousands of teachers, parents, counselors, police officers, and others. The impact of Mr. Kim and the Blue Tree Foundation on Korean society has been profound, establishing a nationwide presence and creating collective action on a social problem hitherto neglected. A 2018 survey showed that since Blue Tree Foundation started its campaign in 1995, the incidence of school violence has dropped from 20% to 3%. Our friends from the Blue Tree Foundation prepared a video on their programs to combat cyberbullying, specifically for our seminar, for our webinar this afternoon. And we are grateful to our friends from South Korea for their generosity in doing this. The video is about 15 minutes long. Ladies and gentlemen, please watch. Hello, how are you everybody? I am Kim Jong-gi, the founder of the Vultri Foundation. Now, unfortunately, COVID-19 is prevalent all over the world. 
We are facing cases that we have never experienced before. I hope everyone here, your families and your organizations are safe and fine. It has been already nine months since we have met together in Manila. I'm so glad that you invited me to this meaningful meeting, the second conversation of the Youth Mental Wellness Forum. Despite the COVID-19, school violence did not disappear, but it changed into the other forms. It means have changed from offline to online. It makes youth's relationship more complicated due to its non-face-to-face -face and anonymity characteristic. Accordingly, my Fruity Foundation recently established a cyber SOS center. And we are now planning for a roadmap for response to cyberbullying. Even though we have been already providing some special programs for students and teachers since 2015. From now on, Park Joo Han, the director of the Cyber SOS Center, will explain the details for these special activities. 안녕하세요. 사이버 SOS 센터장 박주환입니다. 아, 네, 푸른나무 재단은 1995년 설립하여 25년간 학교 폭력 예방 및 피해자 치유를 위해 활동하고 있습니다. 네, 최근에는 태어날 때부터 디지털 문명을 경험한 본 디지털 세대 청소년들이 직면하고 있는 네, 새로운 유형의 사회 문제인 사이버 폭력 예방과 대응에 집중하고 있습니다. 푸른나무 재단과 카카오는 2015년부터 학교로 찾아가는 디지털 시민 교육을 진행하고 있습니다. 바로 사이 좋은 디지털 세상입니다. 푸른나무 재단과 함께 디지털 시민 교육을 운영하는 카카오는 한국에서 가장 많이 사용하는 메신저인 카카오톡을 운영하는 인터넷 종합 서비스 기업입니다. 네, 필리핀에서 흔히 사용하는 메신저인 페이스북과 비버와 유사하다고 생각하시면 될것 같습니다. 네, 우선 영상을 통해서 학교 현장에서 진행하는 디지털 시민 교육 사이 좋은 디지털 세상을 살펴보도록 하겠습니다. On a day, I pro bonajin so po hana. So poor Yoroboni, digital yang ticket qua, young sang penjiga to roita. Ku anen dugunga yagiga tanga in young sanga, putage vestigiga duca de oita. Young sanga turboni, de torero boin and aiga sago in the sesang, oma oma and young jongua, tisigal patang roseoji, chechum dan, technology, bire sesang. 미래의 세상은 정보 기술의 발달로 지금의 세상보다 훨씬 편리함과 신속함을 누리며 풍요롭고 평화로워 보인다. 그러나 아이는 가족과 함께 여행을 하며 기술 발달의 편리함을 악용하여 서로의 마음을 다치게 하는 사람들로 인한 숨겨진 문제를 보게 된다. 여행 후 학교로 돌아온 아이의 곁에는 실제로 디지털 문제를 아는 친구들이 많았고 교실 안에서 따뜻함과 웃음을 찾아볼 수 없어서 마음이 아팠다. 우리 미래 세상이 사이 좋은 따뜻한 세상이 될수 있도록 함께 도와주세요. 이해를 바꿀 수 있는 방법은 단한 가지. 아이가 보내준 여행 티켓을 가지고 현재의 디지털 세상을 여행하며 문제를 해결하고 비밀의 상자를 열어 임무를 완수하는 것. 비밀의 상자는 디지털 나라들의 문제를 해결해야 받을 수 있는 아이템 키가 있어야만 열수 있다고 하는데 자, 지금부터 사이좋은 미래의 디지털 세상을 만들어갈 착한 여행이 시작된다. 아, 네, 영상을 함께 보셨는데요. 사이좋은 디지털 세상은 본 디지털 세대의 청소년들이 디지털 세상을 살아가는 데 필요한 올바른 디지털 인성과 시민의 의식을 갖춘 건강한 청소년으로 성장할 수 있도록 돕는 청소년 디지털 시민 교육입니다. 초등학생을 대상으로 하는 학교로 찾아가는 디지털 시민의식 교육과 교사 연수가 주요 서비스입니다. 네, 학교에서 지불하는 비용은 전혀 없습니다. 전액 무료입니다. 
디지털 시민 교육에 필요한 모든 비용은 카카오에서 지원하고 푸른나무재단은 디지털 시민 교육을 운영합니다. 이와 더불어서 현재 푸른나무재단의 사이버폭력 문제 해결을 위한 접근 방식에 대해 설명해 드리도록 하겠습니다. 먼저 사이버폭력의 현상과 실태 그리고 특징을 파악하는 것입니다. 학교폭력 실태 추이를 보면 지난 20년간 푸른나무재단을 비롯한 민간단체와 정부, 시민들의 노력으로 학교폭력은 지속적으로 감소하였지만 2015년부터는 다시 상승하고 있습니다. 어, 주로 사이버폭력의 증가가 가장 큰 이유입니다. 네, 그 밖에 한국 정부 부처의 사이버폭력 실태조사에서 최근 3년간 사이버폭력은 지속적으로 증가하고 있습니다. 피가해를 동시에 경험하는 비율은 30%를 상회합니다. 실태조사를 통해 사이버폭력 문제 상황을 파악하는 것이 필요합니다. 네, 사이버폭력은 전 세계적으로 공통적인 특징이 있습니다. 사이버상의 언어폭력, 개인정보 및 허위사실 유포 등의 물리적 폭력뿐만 아니라 배제, 따돌림, 험담 등 관계적 폭력이 지속적으로 증가하고 있습니다. 또한 사이버폭력은 익명으로 발생하며 빠르게 확산되고 시간 공간의 제약 없이 발생합니다. 어, 사이버폭력의 피해는 우울, 불안, 대인기피, 자살 등으로 극단적으로 표출되고 이로 인한 사회적 비용은 증가하고 있습니다. 한편으로 사이버폭력 가해자에게 사이버폭력을 한 이유를 부르면 재미와 복수라는 응답이 가장 많습니다. 한국의 경우 스마트폰 보급률이 90%를 육박합니다. 사실상 청소년들의 스마트폰을 통제하는 것은 불가능에 가깝습니다. 교육적, 문화적 접근을 통해서 아이들의 내적 변화를 유도하는 것이 효과적일 것입니다. 네, 다음으로 법과 제도의 검토와 구축이 필요합니다. 푸르다무 재단은 여러 민간단체들과 함께 학교폭력 예방 및 대체에 관한 법률 제정을 위해 시민 47만 명의 서명운동을 주도하였습니다. 이를 통해 2004년 학교폭력 예방 및 대체에 관한 법률이 제정되었고 학교폭력의 정의, 국가 및 지방단체단체의 책무, 기본계획 등 학교폭력 대응을 위한 법적 기준을 마련하였습니다. 네, 이 법에서는 사이버폭력도 함께 정의하고 있습니다. 야, 여기서의 사이버폭력은 사이버 따돌림으로 명시하고 있는데 인터넷, 휴대전화 등 정보통신기기를 이용하여 학생들이 특정 학생들을 대상으로 지속적, 반복적으로 심리적 공격을 가하거나 특정 학생과 관련된 개인정보 또는 허위사실을 유포하여 상대방의 고통을 느끼도록 하는 일체의 행위로 정의합니다. 여기서 말하는 사이버 따돌림은 빠르게 진화하는 스마트폰을 이용한 다양한 폭력의 유형을 포괄할 필요가 있어서 이에 대한 법률 개정에 대한 연구도 함께 진행하고 있습니다. 네, 푸른나무재단에서는 삼성과 함께 사이버폭력의 현상과 실태, 특징을 파악하고 법과 제도의 검토를 통해 구체적인 대응을 준비하고 있습니다. 사이버폭력의 연구, 모바일 플랫폼의 구축, 학교로 찾아가는 사이버폭력 예방 교육, 학생, 교사, 학교장이 참여하는 비폭력 문화운동 총 4가지입니다. 첫 번째, 사이버폭력 연구입니다. 사이버폭력의 용어와 개념을 정의하고 학교 급별, 유형별, 매체별 사이버폭력의 실태를 파악하여 아이들에게 가장 적합한 교육을 개발합니다. 또한 교육 척도를 개발하여 교육 효과를 검증하고 그 결과를 반영합니다. 두 번째, 시민 참여를 위한 모바일 플랫폼 구축입니다. 모바일 앱을 통해서 온라인 교육, 교사 연수, 강사 양성, 상담 신고, 비폭력 캠페인, 정체 참여까지 다양한 서비스를 제공함으로써 학생, 부모, 교사, 일반 시민 등 누구나 쉽게 사이버폭력 피해 시 도움을 받고 사이버폭력 예방 활동에 참여할 수 있도록 지원합니다. 네, 세 번째는 학생, 교사, 학교장 등 이해관계자 모두가 참여하는 비폭력 문화운동입니다. 학교장과 교사의 비폭력 선언을 통해서 평화로운 학교 풍토를 조성하고 학생들의 자발적인 참여를 통해 비폭력 문화를 확산할 수 있도록 사이버폭력 예방 동아리의 조성과 활동을 지원합니다. 네, 마지막으로 학, 학교로 찾아가는 찾아가는 사이버폭력 예방 교육입니다. 앞에 소개한 사이좋은 디지털 세상처럼 재미와 흥미, 자발적 참여를 유도하는 교육과 문화적 접근을 통해서 아이들의 내적 변화를 유도하는 것이 필요합니다. 이와 더불어서 교실에서 지속적으로 예방 교육이 실시될 수 있도록 교사를 위한 
사이버폭력 예방 교육도 함께 제공하고 있습니다. Hi, Kim Jong Gil again. Cyber violence can be prevented and eradicated by students, parents, schools, communities, governments, and international community all working together. Especially international leakage, such as opening international forum, improving opinions gathered through international conference, and spreading our excellent programs and campaigns abroad will be also very helpful. I heard that cyber violence, including school violence, has been increasing in Philippines lately too. I hope all our efforts 
help making happy and peaceful world where all the Philippines use dream of hope. Thank you very much. Thank you to our friends from Blue Tree Foundation for that video. We certainly look forward to a more in-depth discussion with you on your successful programs uh, in a short while. This afternoon, we're joined by a panel of mental health advocates from the Philippines. We have with us, and allow me to introduce uh, the three of them, we have Dr. Bernadette Madrid. Dr. Madrid is the Executive Director for the Child Protection Network Foundation Incorporated. It's an NGO with hospital-based woman and child protection units all over the Philippines. She co-chaired the WHO Clinical Guidelines Committee on the Health Response to Sexual Abuse of Children and Adolescents and the WHO Committee on Responding to Child Maltreatment. She was elected to the board of the International Society for the Prevention of Child Abuse and Neglect from 2004 to 2010 and until recently has been a member of the steering committee of the Global Social Service Workforce Alliance. We have with us also Father Fidel Orendain, Salesian of uh, Don Bosco. Father Fidel specializes in social communications, parent-children relationships, goal setting for young people, and mass media and social media awareness. He does these through retreats, seminars, and classes in the seminary. Father Fidel held the position of Communications and Public Relations Officer of the Philippine South Province of Don Bosco for 20 years. At one time, he was a special consultant to the Social Communications Commission of their order in Rome and the Vatican. And then thirdly, we have with us today, Mr. Ace Deloy. Ace Deloy is the Senior Advocacy Officer of Stairway Foundation Incorporated, an NGO focusing on child care. ACE started working on the issue of child online protection in the Philippines in 2007, conducting early exploratory studies and piloting prevention programs on the issue of online sexual abuse and the exploitation of children. ACE has helped initiate the CyberSafe program, currently the flagship child online protection program of the DEP at the Philippine Department of Education. ACE also serves as the point person for the Philippines for safer internet days, and has also lobbied for the adoption of a national celebration for Internet Day Philippines. He also works with um, an organization called Kinder Nothilif, uh, Germany, as their Asia Regional Child Protection Trainer. And of course, we have, as you can see on your screen, some of them are with us here. Uh, we have Mr. Park Juhan, who is the head of the Preventive Education Center of the Blue Tree Foundation. Ms. Lee Sun Young, team leader, research team for counseling adjustment of the Blue Tree Foundation. And also joining us is Mr. Lee Ji Sang, the international manager of the sharing organization team of Blue Tree Foundation. Ji Sang will serve as interpreter for our Korean panelists. And finally, we have the honor and the privilege, of course, to have him join us this afternoon as well for the discussion our 2019 Ramon Magsaysay Awardee, Kim jong Ki. So good afternoon, everyone. Shall we begin, uh, Dr. Bernie Madrid? Mr. Kim jong Ki, you, you mentioned uh, that uh, you notice also how uh, in the Philippines, bullying has been increasing. So you're quite right. When we did the national um, baseline survey on violence against children, uh, we did find that bullying in the Philippines was quite high. We found that 65% of youth in the Philippines have experienced some form of bullying. And this was in 2015. And when the Program for International Students Assessment did a similar survey in 2018, it was still 65%. So quite high. In fact, compared to other countries, in other countries, the average is just 23%, but in the Philippines, it's 65%. And when we look closely at the prevalence of cyberbullying, bullying, we find it's still high at 44%. So it is a real problem here in our country. 
when uh, we did the systematic literature review uh, of all researches done in the Philippines on violence against children, uh, using this uh, Bronfenbrenner socio-ecological framework, and you can see here that we look at the different factors from the individual relationship, community, and uh, societal level. Uh, we identified these different risk factors that led to bullying from the victim to the bully, uh, to the family of the bully and the victims uh, in the community and cultural norms supportive of violent discipline in the home including the high penetration of information and communications technology uh, in the Philippines. So all of these different risk factors uh, together really show why we have such a high prevalence of bullying in the Philippines. And we know that in terms of prevention, single programs really is not enough. Uh, we need to really affect all of these different factors. So. Uh, multiple programs will probably be probably be more successful and in the um, review of the internet safety education by Finkelhorn colleagues and this is hot of the press just published in April 2020 it is a review of reviews of all the different internet safety education programs in the light of research about the dynamics of internet dangers and the efficacy of youth prevention education, they found that most problems described as internet harms have roots and manifestations in both the offline and online contexts and have similar dynamics in both contexts. That's why in South Korea, uh, Mr. Uh, jong Ki, I noticed that you started with your offline bullying program and then you went into your online uh, bullying program because actually they have the same risk factors and uh, a lot of those online programs will also need the support offline because studies have found that the risk factors associated with online problems are really similar to those of offline exposure and there are few unique online risk factors suggesting that integrated focus on general risk should be effective with online behavior. That's why the recommendation of this review of reviews is that most prevention education programs on internet harms are best carried out through integrated and comprehensive programs that focus on both the offline and the online risks and these dynamics conjointly. And I think that the success of your program in South Korea is the fact that you did this. Now, it was just not merely cyberbullying an online program, but you also have a very strong offline program. So I will end here and later on, maybe uh, in our discussion and in the open forum, uh, we can discuss this further. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bernie. Okay, shall we listen now to Father Fidel? Yes, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. The work and achievements of Blue Tree Foundation has triggered several considerations on digital citizenship, some of which I have called from discussions with students and educators. Let me share some of my thoughts and their thoughts. Becoming a digital citizen is not simply becoming efficient in using modern information technology. It also means being exposed to and contributing to other cultures. Such a new culture is a combination of existing cultures, but also born of and cultivated by the imagination of digital citizens, whatever their beliefs and ethical principles are. The new culture of digital citizens may sometimes be incongruent to traditional practices and beliefs. Unabated use of social media and unfiltered messages, for example, are bringing about certain behaviors that can clash with societal and family norms. There are two concerns here for many of our schools in the Philippines. One is to accept while regulating the rapid intervention brought about by technology that continues to influence human formation and learning 
while occasionally overstepping traditions. The other is to carefully monitor the effects of the cyber world on impressionable individuals, especially growing kids who are psychologically changed and their identities challenged from within. New cultures within old traditional cultures are inclined to clash. And as the saying goes, when giants fight, the grass suffer. Young people living out new cultures are inclined to affect or be affected by others in ways that they do not expect. Thus, continuous education of multi-participants must promote a comprehensive orientation on the responsibilities of those embracing digital citizenship by choice or by circumstance. Cyber, violent, cyber violence is a byproduct of the digital culture. Most of us agree that education is a major aspect in curbing such a behavior, especially in the early stages of growth of a person. That said, it should never be the sole responsibility of the school to inculcate knowledge, much so develop character. For education to truly happen, a concerted effort of many players must be designed continuously updated and carried out consistently. As Dr. Bernie has just mentioned, a single program is never enough. Otherwise, it is as if we are carelessly allowing generations of young people to travel by themselves anywhere and anytime without pointing them to the right direction and considering their safety and well-being. I share the ideas of many educators who broaden the concept of education, not only as the process of receiving or giving systematic knowledge at school through legitimate teachers. Parents should not blame the school for not nurturing principles in a child that they have not instilled. Education must also be seen as primarily character formation initiated and sustained at home. Therefore, the partnership of responsible teachers in school, parents at home, and young people in groups help, helping in mentoring their peers is a formidable triad that must be aided by proactive laws and continuously supported by organizations concerned in guiding young people traverse the sometimes perilous wilderness of the digital country. We have enough laws to warn and penalize individuals and institutions guilty of action and inaction on the matter of cyberbullying. The defect is in the implementation and the scarcity of laws that squarely puts on the shoulders of parents the responsibility of guiding their young children acquire good habits online and offline. Parents usually are the ones supplying young people their gadgets. The home is usually the place where cyber assaults are launched. Many parents have little knowledge of the lives of their children in school, much less of their lives in the cyber world, and that is sad. In many schools in the Philippines, anti-cyber violence continues to be promoted. Some have made this a recurring topic in lessons and good manners classes. In my school, it is a pledge and a prayer of commitment at the same time recited weekly in the General Assembly. Studies point that most schools are sufficiently giving warnings about the risks of the overuse of information communication technology. However, almost every generation continues the proud tradition of succumbing to curiosity and peer pressure. Even the behaved and the saintly bend and break the rules once in a while. This time, however, because of the availability of personal technology and the option of anonymity, many end up violently hurting others and themselves. That is why it is a huge relief that there are works like Blue Tree Foundation that help guide young people to use information and communication technology in order to make informed choices about how to be good citizens of this digital borderless country. But more importantly, such an organization continues to promote the essential task 
of cultivating appropriate behavior, which will later become a citizen's, citizen race, collective cultural trait and identity. Its consistent efforts and growing influence continue to remind us all that technology without humanism is a dangerous path we should not carelessly lead young people to explore and inhabit by themselves. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Father Fidel. Um, next, let's listen to Ace Tiloy. Thank you very much, uh, Emily. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so when Mr. Kim Jong-ki was sharing about the work of Blue Tree Foundation, it really resonated with me on how they focus on integrating education in terms of uh, the violence prevention in schools. So we basically had the same journey. So it really resonated with me, Blue Tree Foundation's work uh, in the education sector. And this is the same with Stereo Foundation. So um, our, our main tenant is actually, it's, when we talk about online safety, which also covers prevention of cyberbullying, we should not focus on technology only, but, but rather it should be about empowering children with protective behavior. And protective behavior comes from many, many spheres of children's lives, primarily the family, but also a very huge influence, of course, is development in schools. But our journey in working with schools is that uh, many educators in the Philippines had the heart to teach prevention of cyber abuse, uh, for children. However, they lack the necessary tools on how to teach this, considering the digital divide. So our main goal back then was to craft a program with the Department of Education, which will develop locally produced education materials best suited to the cultural education context of the Philippines. And this is where Safe, Cyber Safe comes, uh, came in. So this is a partnership between the Department of Education and Stereo Foundation to promote online child protection education in schools. It doesn't solely focus on cyberbullying. It also talks about other abuses of children, but it has cyberbullying as a component, as a topic. So we first started out with lesson plans, actually, and manuals in 2016. Uh, I remember very fondly that uh, whenever we do one-off trainings with teachers back then before 2016, they would tell us that your PowerPoint presentation was very good, is very good, but we need materials that we can use in the classroom. And this is where the idea of working with teachers to develop educational materials that they can use themselves in the classroom came about. And thus in 2016, we launched with the Department of Education, the CyberSafe manuals. Uh, so right now we have these manuals for grades five to six in junior high school, and we are also elaborating something for the lower year levels. However, we also realized that uh, we have to supplement the traditional lesson plans the teacher use, and thus uh, multimedia videos came about. It, it, this was launched in 2018 and working with private industry partners and the Department of Education, we managed to came out with a series of learning videos on cyber safety called Daliri Escuela. So Daliri Escuela is a play on, uh, is a play on words, uh, finger in school because we use our thumbs to basically our fingers to manipulate digital devices. It currently has four topics, uh, one on gaming addiction, about, one about online chatting, and one about children producing naked images of themselves and then sharing this to other children, which is uh, what we locally called sexting. And then later on, at the end of the webinar, I believe that we will be playing the one on cyberbullying. And just like what Dr. Bernie mentioned, uh, this, this the, the approach on cyber safety, uh, we don't dichotomize between offline and online risks. The discussion should always be integrated offline and online protection of children. And that's all the, the learning resources that we produce with the Department of Education uh, follow that thread of discussion. And like what Father Fidel mentioned, it's very important not to limit education in the context of schools. That's why we've also extended producing materials wherein teachers can give out to the parents or use for parents' orientation. And these parents' brochure are, are, were made in the language of parents. Basically, these materials are talking to the parents themselves. 
2019, we launched the CyberSafe e-learning courses because we realized that we have to take back technology. We have to maximize technology to teach cyber safety to children. And thus, uh, these are free interactive e-learning courses for children. Uh, initially, we have these three courses available. One is on content sharing. Another one is on adding friends in social media. And one is on bullying, which focuses on offline and cyber bullying. So these are very interactive courses. We're in you just log in for free. You watch a very short animation. For example, one the, the one I'm showing right now is on bullying and cyberbullying. And it shows the journey of, of victims of cyberbullying. It, it might start out offline and then traverse towards the online sphere. And then after they watch the short videos, they go into interactive gamified courses. Um, because we, we know for a fact that children love these interactive courses. So, so we wanted to leverage on that. So these are now available via the, the cyber safety website and also the DepEd Commons, which is the, well, one of the e-learning platforms of the Department of Education. So, so it's right there for free access. Um, elaborating all of these materials, we also realized that as a small NGO in the Philippines, we cannot really go school to school and do these direct sessions to students. And the, the more sustainable way to go about it was to, to train the teachers, to train trainer teachers. That's why in the early part of 2019, we began a series of national and regional training of trainer teachers with the Department of Education in order for them to be introduced to the materials to understand uh, the aspect or the concept of child online protection and how Offline protection of children and online is all interrelated. We were also talking about pedagogical aspects. How do you teach cyber safety to children without lecturing them? And thus, when I saw the video of Blue Tree Foundation wherein they were using games, that really resonated with me. Unfortunately, the pandemic really stopped this intervention, the training of teachers. So we just managed to finish halfway through. Soon, we'll we be coming out with some home-based learning modules adapted to the new normal and also launching a specialized e-learning course for teachers for them to understand child online protection. So I really commend Blue Tree Foundation for the work they're doing. Uh, we are kindred spirits in this aspect, so thank you very much for the work you are doing. Thank you so much, Mr. A. Stiloy. Uh, let's bring, a, bring back in Mr. Kim. Oh, I know hi. is yes. Hi, Mr. Kim. Uh, any thoughts you you know you'd like to share with us after you heard our three yeah. um, reactors, our three panelists? Okay. Uh, let me talk in uh, Korean first because we we have a very excellent translator okay. here, so it is more precise, you know, uh, transformation. Okay. Uh, 첫 번째로 지상 못할 들어라. 예. 첫 번째로 필리핀도 많은 노력을 이 부분에서 하고 있고 이미 좋은 성과들이 있다는 데에서 굉장히 존경을 표하다. First of all, I would like to um, say I'm I respect you all about all the efforts in the Philippines. 음. 그리고 이 사이버 불링의 중요성에 대해서도 알고 이미 여러 가지 프로그램을 가지고 있는 것에 대해서 어, 굉장히 그 존경스럽다. I respect you all, especially about um, you already know how severe the cyberbullying is and um, how we have to um, react for about the cyberbullying. 그래서 어, 현재 그 처음에 닥터 Burma data ga yegi hennde ke hakkyo pongyeok-i 65%-ga deego ke cyber pongyeok-do sangdangi nopun sujun-i-raneun gosel aalgo gengyang ee jom jom nolennde ije ke uri ga hea dee point-deul nee ga gengumang gul ha ngom yegi dee bogeetta First, Dr. Burmi said um we found 65% of school violence rate and also a high rate of um, mm. cyberbullying rate. Mm. And I would like to talk about from now on about, um, about how to deal with this um, 
react um, by my experience. Okay, 먼저 학교 교사를 통해 가지고 우리가 어, 여러 가지 적절한 프로그램을 하고 있는데 그것은 사실 가장 쉽고 또 반드시 해야, 정부가 해야 되는 불가피한 그 수단이다. First, we are already um, conducting the educations um, through the school teachers, but this one is the easiest one and the most important one. Um, what we 그리고, have to do. Oh yeah, 그리고 그 비용이 저렴하게 되는 딴 것에 비해서. Also, the expense is um, the most um, cheapest um, one. Uh, 그래서 우리가 지금 관심을 가지고 해야 되는 부분은 학교 폭력 전반적에 대해서 그 학교만 그저 강조하고 있는데 그 먼저 가정에 대한 문제도 관심을 많이 갖지 않을 수가 없다. 그래서 가정에 대한 그 교육을 할수 있는 방법을 나름대로 지역 단위별로 학교 단위별로 어떤 방식이든지 안내를 하는 교회에서건 학교에서건 하는 게 필요하다. 가정 교육이 중요하다. 아니, so we need to concentrate on um, the education which, which hangs on inside the home, domestic education. Um, yes. 그리고 학교에서는 학교에서는 주로 그 피해자 가해자 관계만이 자꾸 그 연구되고 그 치료를 위해서 노력이 부과되는데 음, 더욱 중요한 것은 제 3의 그 방관자 아이들을 어떻게 이것이 죄악이고 잘못이다는 인식을 주고 그 애들이 학교 폭력을 스톱하고 나서는 것 그것이 굉장히 중요하다는 데 인식을 같이 하고 있다. Especially we only focus we are only focusing on the relationship between the perpetrators and the victims. Um, we're but we need to now focus on the bystanders, inacting bystanders, and right. we need to raise those um, public awareness about the bystanders. Good, good, 잘했어. 그리고 사이버 불링 부분은 어, 이미 우리가 여러 가지 프로그램을 하고 있지만 어, 우리가 게임을 통해서 아이들한테 공감력을 갖게 하고 그걸 인지하게 하는 노력들을 많이 하고 있다, 현재는. Also in cyberbullying, we are um, concentrating on the education through by playing games. So um, it would be effective to the children. 그래서 우리가 현재 개발하고 있는 프로그램을 가지고 그 푸른 코끼리라는 프로그램을 가지고 학교에 가서 그 교사와 학생들을 위해 사고 있는 프로그램에 대해서 우리 박주한 센터장에 이미 설명이 있었지만은 어, 다시 한번 구체적인 질문을 지금부터 어, 서로 대화를 하게 나가면서 설명을 해드리고 싶다. Yeah, so we are um, now sending our instructors to the schools um, through our new program, Blue Elephants, um, as what our Mr. Park already said mm. through the video, and mm. we would like to talk about uh, the details through mm. the Q&As. Mm. Okay. Any questions for us? Uh, would you ask us? And then we will explain uh, whatever it is as far as we know. Yeah, we are now encouraging our mm. uh, participants to mm. uh, send in your questions using mm. the Q&A tab. Mm. And later yeah. we will try to uh, ask the questions and, and uh, refer this to our panelists. Juhan and uh, Sunny, would you want to add anything at this point? Centerjang님이나 소영 팀장님 하고 싶으신 코멘트 있으면은 지금 yeah? 발언하시면 되겠습니다. 그럼 제가 할까요? 아, 아 안녕하세요. 예, 푸른 나무 재단 박주환입니다. Hello, I'm Park Juhan from the Blue Tree Foundation. 네, 저희 그 재단에서 사이버 폭력 문제 해결을 위해 접근하는 방식은 크게 네 가지로 볼수 있습니다. In our foundation, we have a total of four um, responses to the cyberbullying. 네, 먼저 현상을 파악하고 그, 그 구체적인 실태 통계 수치를 확인하고 나서 어, 이어 대한 법과 정책 
그리고 이를 근거로 하는 실행 방안을 고, 어, 고민하는 과정입니다. The whole procedure is like this. First, we identify the phenomenon and actual condition, and then um, we enact the law and policy, and finally, uh, we deal with the solution. 네, 그 현상과 실태는 어, 어떤 게 문제인지, 그러니까 문제를 정의하는 단계라고 볼수 있고요. Mm, for the phenomenon, it is defining what the actual problem is. 그리고 법과 정책을 확인하는 것은 어, 지금 시스템과 제도에 대한 것을 확인하는 차원입니다. And then for the law and policy, it is a procedure what um, we find out what we need to actually do and systemize. 네, 법이 없다면 지속 가능한 개입을 위해서 법을 제정하고요. 네, 법이 있다면 어, 그거에 대한 부족 부분을 분석해서 그 현장의 실행 방안을 검토하는 과정입니다. If there's um, no if there's no law, um, we start to um, we start to legislate the new law for the cyberbullying. And if there are already a law, we keep find out what is um, what is needed. So we start to revise um, revise the law. Uh. 좀 길게 얘기해도 되나요? 예. 아, 어, 그래서 현상과 실태를 먼저 보면 어, 다들 전 세계적으로 마찬가지 현상인데 어, 사이버 폭력의 피해, 가해 그리고 피가해를 동시에 경험하는 게 많은데 이 파, 피가해를 동시에 경험하는 거에 지금 주목을 하고 있습니다. Um, when we look at the phenomenon and actual condition, we find out um, globally we find out that Um, all the people are experiencing um, the um, the victim and the perpetrator at the same time um, repeatedly. 네, 어 결국 그 이유를 물어보면 재미와 복수라고 하는 응답이 많습니다. Um, when we ask why do you Um, do conduct the conduct the cyber bullying. The most reason was that um, because it's just fun. 네, 앞서 말씀드린 것처럼 한국에 한국에서도 청소년들의 스마트폰 보급률이 90%를 육박하는 상황에서 매체를 통제하기는 사실 불가능합니다. In Korea, the supply rate of smartphone is 90 above 90%. As I told you earlier, so um, I can say that it is impossible to control all the all those smartphones and teenagers who are using smartphones. 네, 결국에는 교육과 문화로 접근해야 되는데 그 아이들의 마음을 변화시키기 위해서 to induce their um, inner change, we need to focus on education and culture. culture. 네. 결국 도, 어, 교육은 어, 아이들의 도덕성과 어, 정서, 감정, 공감으로 접근해야 될 필요가 있고 So, um, for the educational approach, morality is an ability to measure individual behavior's influence on others. 네. 그 문화적으로는 아까 명예의 선께 말씀해 주신 것처럼 어, 반간자의 개입 반간자들이 예방자가 될수 있도록 하는 문화자 접근과 안전한 학교 풍토를 만드는 것이 중요합니다. And about the cultural um, perspective, we need to um, focus on the bystanders, enacting bystanders, and the um, and the um, and no one, no one to bystand. By stand. 어, 그 이런 개입들이 어, 법의 어, 국가의 책무 어, 그리고 예방 교육 방법 그리고 피해자에 대한 보호 등이 어, 이런 내용들이 법에도 명시가 되어야 됩니다. So we want the law to um, specify that um, the government, the nation, 
needs to be responsible for this intervention and about how to do the conduct the prevention education and lastly the protection of victims. 네, 이를 위해서는 대중들이 관심과 참여를 해야 되는데 네, 오늘 같은 그 자리가 그것의 구심점이 되고 네, 시작점이 되기를 네, 기대합니다. So the public need to um, focus and participate in this whole whole procedure and um, today's today's event forum will be the start point. 네, 감사합니다. Thank you. Hi everyone. I'm Sunny from South Korea. And I would like to ask all the personnel here to share how similar or how different Philippines is from the Korean context. Uh, since Korean society has recently been shocked by some online sex crime case, we call it Enbombang Sakon. And we know that teenagers want wants to experience their social influence in the cyberspace and confidence and affection from the cyber, cyberspace. And they are easy to be hooked up by luring words like, you're so pretty, why don't you make lots of money and show it to those men? Or I will give you big money if you send me your photos, so on. So we want teenagers receive respect and recognition in their daily lives. And if they are intervened properly, so they were not to be lured into illegal digital space. And I want to really share opinions from your side. Thank you. Definitely in the Philippines, there are certain similarities in terms of how peer pressure and the drive uh, towards materialism really affect how teenagers in particular behave. Uh, in terms of safety in the digital digital space. Although uh, we have, in terms of teenagers, for example, sharing um, sexualized or naked images of themselves, um, this crosses towards sexting and sometimes even sextortion. So not, but it is, it's all interconnected. So in the Philippines, it might start out in the context of sexting, we're in uh, two teenagers in a romantic relationship exchange naked images. And then because of low digital, uh, well, low digital uh, uh, caution or the, the, there, there is that uh, low awareness on how to protect private personal information online, uh, one of those involved might send it to their peers because of peer pressure the pressure to share these naked images of, of the girlfriend, for example. And then it connects to cyberbullying because then it becomes uh, viral in school. So the issues are all interconnected. Uh, usually it's really peer pressure. And sometimes uh, because of the economic situation in the Philippines, some young people also dwell into the online sexual exploitation industry, wherein sometimes they get recruited to, to uh, quote-unquote, sell their bodies via digital means, unfortunately. Yes. And uh, to add to that, uh, what research has shown is that um, most of the time, this involves people they know. This is not a stranger uh, in the internet that suddenly just, you know, uh, grooms this child. Uh, there has been some form of face-to-face -face contact or it's a, or when we talk about bullying, uh, there could already be offline bullying that migrated into the online bullying. So uh, while there might be instances where it's mainly online, but in the majority of cases, um, they, it's really an offline, there's an offline dynamics that migrated online. One of the things perhaps that adds to the peer pressure is, is also the, 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 the acceptance, the social acceptance that each young person wants to have when it comes to being with their peers when a child's upbringing does not allow him full expression, the child develops a very low self-esteem. 
So when his peers and his friends tell him about what is something new and what popular kids actually do, they're easily persuaded. And that is why I departed my observation on two proponents. One is the influence of the family and also the influence of culture. And that is why it is difficult when kids are online, they experience a different culture. And sometimes the stimuli is overwhelming. And it's such another, it's, it is another <clears throat> pressure that when they see how other cultures live, how happy they are, how fulfilled they are, they think that doing something what others do become the, the, the means or the shortcut to being accepted by their friends. And that becomes problematic when they realize that they are actually now being abused. And I think what is difficult about cyberbullying is unlike offline bullying, uh, is that it can become a tsunami of bullies. So it might just start with uh, one bully uh, and then you have all these other people riding in on yeah. it. Uh, we have seen that happen in the yeah. Philippines. I think we have some very uh, yeah. notorious cases where because of this tsunami of bullies now coming from all sides, that the child who might or the youth who might already be depressed to start with uh, might be you know, moved to be so depressed that they commit suicide. I mean, we've seen that. At this point, uh, we will now open the floor to questions and answers. And uh, I'd like to call in uh, the core, core members of the January Forum to join our speakers. Uh, Dr. Hani Karandang uh, will join us now. Uh, you know that Dr. Hani Karandang is referred to as the mother of child psychology and founder of uh, MLAC. Uh, we will also call in Professor Randy David of the University of the Philippines. She, uh, Professor Randy is also a member of the RMAF Board of Trustees. Uh, Dr. Susan Mercado, former regional director of the WHO Western Pacific Region. Now she's wearing a lot of hats given this pandemic. Uh, we I'd also like to call in Ms. Dina Paterno, the president and founding trustee of Beacon School. Uh, Dr. Uh, Rolando Balburia, Dr. Oyi, uh, uh, who is now pio pioneering and advocating functional medicine and uh, through his go-to health uh, uh, in institute. Dr. Uh, Ritchie, Dr. Ritchie Anpar is a, a senior counselor at the MLAC Institute together with Dr. Hani Karandang. And I think Dr. Cornelio Banaag will join us. Dr. Cornelio Banaag, if we have the mother of child psychology, Dr. Hadi Karandang, Dr. Corny Banag is the father of child and adolescent psychiatry in the Philippines. Welcome to our core of experts who joined us in January. Now you uh, have this kind of discussion with our uh, ORD, Mr. Kim Jonki, the Blue Tree Foundation, and all other speakers. So I think Dr. Hadi Karandang would want to ask first question yes uh it, the discussion has been so rich that uh there are many questions in my mind of course i will give time for others so i will just focus on my own experience because my experience is uh dealing intimately with those who have been depressed and suicidal because of cyberbullying. and uh i think it's important to go back to the dynamics the basic dynamics of bullying, that bullying, uh, physical bullying, or bullying is a system. You have the bully, the bullied, and the bystander, which I think we discussed when I was a discussant of uh, Kim jong Ki on his paper. I put in the bystander well, because we have been talking about the bully and the bullied, so I put in the bystander. But in the, when we were talking in January, the bystander was a live physical person who was assigned by the school and it was easy to pinpoint what the bystander could do and who was the bystander. But now we're talking about something very different. I know they're related. I know that one goes with the other, but we have to see the difference also. Um, as my friends have Bernie and uh, Ace and the father Fidel have said, it's all together, you know, both together. But I think we have to look at the basic dynamics we're in, uh, in cyber, in, uh, 
physical bullying, you have the bully, the bully, the bystander, and we know what the bystander can do, we can identify. But in cyberbullying, we don't know. There is anonymity, but also a tsunami, as Bernie, my friend, said. No? So I'm so grateful that we have some programs already by Blue Tree Foundation and also Stair Stairway, whom I was with, Ace, Ace no? and I think it's, it's related to education. So the key factor, I think, in uh, looking at cyberbullying is the control. Now, how do we control cyberbullying? How do we deal with a bystander who is unknown and who is also multiple? No? And I think the answer that was given was education, uh, cultural um, education and culture, no? change of culture. And also that uh, training you know, of the players, the, the teachers, the school personnel. And I think very, very important here is the family. I think it, uh, key are the parents. You know? As Confucius said, the family is the place where, compassion, where it's a school for compassion. And when we talk about bullying, we need to talk about kindness. We need to talk about compassion in terms of the educational uh, values that we are going to uh, focus on. And I'd like to emphasize that because we know now that the culture of violence and hate has dominated the internet. In fact, Time Magazine had a, had a cover that said, "Why we are losing the internet to the culture of hate. So maybe in the schools, in the, in the homes, in the media, in the all over, you know, whatever me, uh, forum we can have, I think it is also the promotion of very specific values like respect for self, respect for others, dignity, and kindness and compassion. So I pinpoint the family because that's, that's my, my area of uh, work. <laughs> Just pinpoint the family as the first school where we learn compassion, we learn kindness, or we don't. So I think it's very important also not to, not to focus on the schools, but not to forget to focus on families. Yeah. As the first line, that's the first step, no? the first place where we need to really teach compassion versus violence. So anyway, thank you. Thank so you, Dr. Kadandan. Uh, maybe a, a quick thought on the bystander. I think you wanted to get some thoughts uh, yes. from Mr. Kim, maybe. Exactly. Because that's the third, third leg of the entire, uh, the, the entire uh, cycle. There's a bully, a bullied, and the bystander. And I think we're all bystanders if you're not yes. the bully and the bully. Mr. Kim, exactly. uh, some quick thoughts on yes, how please. to address bystanders. Yes. Yeah. It is very good question. Thank you. Yes. It is very, I, uh, hi, nice to meet you again. Hi, it's hi nice to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so uh, much. This is uh, so good. Uh, and yeah, your point is very you know, clear and very important. I know that just, you know, uh, go be thinner on the you know, online. Uh, it is most, you know, difficult thing uh, we have to solve. But it is, you know, according to the the, the educational circumstances and the, the cultural environment is very important for them. So it is not easy. How can we distinguish the go betweener uh, on the online? Yeah, it is not easy. But we have we have to, we have to gather you know some uh, another cultural circumstances. Also, the most important thing in this matter is, I think, you know, the, the leader group in the society, just like a senior politician mm -hmm. and uh, what, what the directors of a company or something, mm -hmm. they have to keep the law and the, uh, some orders, okay? It is not to make the you know, thought it is most important things, you know. That is, that is the key point, I think, you know, because they, they are learning through society, okay. Society is the, you know, leader of the, you know, of the current uh, uh, phenomena in, in this society. So the leader group from the, you know, government side uh, to the every affairs, 
they have to, they have to keep such kind of you know, basic uh, streams. It is also a very important thing. Also, secondary, I think that, uh, each family, parents is very, very important. They have to, yeah, they have to follow the, you know, orders and the laws and the, they have to have the good etiquette to teach their children, you know, how to do for the others, or the, the children, their uh, friends. So they have to show their uh, some examples in the home from the beginning. We, they cannot uh, do everything in the school. School is not very limited time and limited, yeah. you know, uh, circumstances. So society and parents is the most uh, key things I think as far as now. Anyhow, I, I, uh, um, this Sonyang Lee, Sonyang Lee, would you explain about this matter uh, on your side? Okay, so I think that gaining popularity among followers or viewers mm -hmm. is getting serious. Mm -hmm. And I think all of you are familiar with uh, meme oriented culture. Mm -hmm. Meme. Yeah. Meme. Mm -hmm. meme. So it makes users accept even extreme perspectives that communicate discrimination, but it's hard to criticize them for the content since it's just a meme and it's just a humor. Okay, so slangs used in online communities to express consumption of pornography and even that should be insured illegally it's so easy to convenient. It's so convenient to copy, distribute, or even consume them through online network. Mm -hmm. And even ordinary people began to be consumed because individual can produce and individual can consume. And anonymous, anonymity, anonymous network, it encourages them to, to be allow them to be able to consider it normal to do harm online spaces. It's already become a daily routine. So using digital med media technique, it allows them to commute, commit violence very easy and they consider it as a play and it creates a cultural norms that expect other members to do the same. So uh, in, in my personal opinion, uh, uh, internet culture that makes uh, them to feel like it's a, it's a play, it's a culture, it makes them to be a bystander. They think it's a humor. And I think it's very important and very serious context. Thank you. And just to say that I think the challenge in the education that you're doing with Blue Tree with young kids is how to make them uh, good bystanders. Uh, is there such a thing in that box? How to be good bystanders? Because it seems to me that majority of bystander, bystanders join the bullying. So is the preventive aspect of the Blue Tree uh, curriculum for young children, is there a component there where it teaches uh, the young children to be good bystanders. Yes, so I'm digital literacy is very important. How to be a nice citizen in digital world and how to be equipped by digital etiquette is very important. So we need to teach children not to respond when the cyber crime is happening, we need to share them and we need to teach them how to share photos. For example, we need to teach children, if you want to unload your photo, but if you have somebody else in your photo, you need to ask them, can I unload this photo? And if you cannot erase them without their okay or without their agree, you shouldn't unload the photo. So it's the very first step of prevention of cyberbullying or cyber crime. So digital literacy is the first key 
to teach them how to be nice in the world. Before I ask the question, I mean, there's so much, as, as Honey said, it's so rich. And I got so excited when I saw the videos and even the program of Stairway. But I think um, I'm, I'm echoing what many of you are saying, but as a parent, uh, I'm a parent of three daughters and I've been, you know, I've been dealing with, uh, in the education field, we have a small school, but I also deal with individual students. I think the key there is really citizenship. I mean, in our small school, that's part of our values is what makes a responsible citizen because it's really knowing what your responsibilities are as a citizen first and in the digital space knowing then what the boundaries and responsibilities of being a citizen is because the nature of digital space is it's it's it could it could be anything right which is what makes it exciting but if you don't have boundaries like parents give boundaries to their kids so they know what what's okay what's not okay because if you don't give boundaries then anything is possible anything is okay mm -hmm. and if they're not yet able to really discern and even think critically that what they're getting is not really okay they're going to absorb they're like sponges children are sponges they will absorb whatever and if everyone likes it and it's popular, sure. But the boundaries need to be important. So I feel, I mean, like I said, in our little school at Beacon, citizenship is one of our values. What does it mean to be a good citizen? And in the digital arena, I really feel that is key. You know, like in any, you go into any meeting, there are rules of order. There are, you know, things that you can do and you cannot do. And it's amazing how in the digital world, anything is really possible. But, you know, and nobody's really police, policing that. And like many of you said, that's impossible. It's really, it's impossible. It's impossible. It's like yeah. the, you know, the multiplication of it is just beyond anyone, you know, unless you dedicate your entire life to it, maybe, but not even. But I think it's also just empowering every child, you know, empowering every child to know what is it that makes a good citizen, whether on offline or online. What does that mean? And then empowering them as well to think critically so they can discern, you know, because they can. Sometimes you're not there as a parent to know. I mean, parents don't even know what's going on. You know, there's a lot going on at the screen of a child and it's confusing. What, what is that? You know, you can't keep up with technology, right? As a parent, I know I struggle with that, but, but you, 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 know, you have to give them the tools so they on their own can discern, can actually begin to question, even question, right? Was that okay to do? Because as a bystander, if they think that's not okay, if they know that it's not okay, then maybe they can say something and that can start something. But if no one knows that that's, there's something wrong with that and point it out, then it gets accepted because no one's saying anything. So when, you know, people get complicit when no one's saying anything. So I think it really starts with knowing what their boundaries are knowing what it means to be a good citizen and then empowering them to question and to know that it's okay for you to say something respectfully if it is not correct so that then they can be empowered and so obviously the role of the family is strong but you know again that's an issue because for some families are you know for a lot of filipino families they're not really together there's a lot of dynamic there's a lot of dysfunction there's a lot of issues you know even access and and even knowing what they're on but so it really needs to be a partnership and i think what i'm excited about with what you have in your harmonious digital world is that what it promotes is good digital citizenship what does that mean but the fun element of learning what that means so that it really it became, you know, be, the, the kids embrace it rather than seeing it as I just need to know these, they become, they embrace it. And because they have a passport, they're getting stamps, you know, they're getting to write songs. It just becomes like a fun thing, but then it becomes something that becomes like naturally organically something they can embrace. So to me, I'm really, I'm really keen to know those details because Thank you. of those uh, partnerships mm -hmm. that you have. Yeah, but before the next question, I'd like to uh, connect what you said, Ms. Dina, about the role of parents. And there's a question uh, from our attendees from Emma and Emma Ignacio of Consuelo. And uh, I think uh, there's another question that uh, it, they asked about how, how, what is the most effective way to reach out to parents 
so that they can be better informed of the abuse that is happening online, no? and especially in our current setup where uh, work from home or the, the, the children now are they're, they're on their own no? in their tablet, uh, doing uh, interaction in the tablet and the uh, parents have to do other. So issue of supervision as well. Uh, maybe Ace, your experience, uh, Father, Father Fidel, before we ask our friend from uh, Korea. And uh, I don't know, uh, Dr. Hani Karandang and Dr. Richie Parr, you may just please share also your experience. How do you reach out to parents in terms of supervising children who are online? First, uh, uh, technology, this kind, ICT, is evolving just too fast. You know? And second, many times before adults can tell kids what to do, the kids are telling them how to operate their technology. <laughs> So there's a, very, there's a very obvious reversal of role here. And adults cannot actually tell the kids, let me tell you what I did when you were young. Because they don't have these similar experiences. So in a way, the, the children get a form of superiority complex on what they should be telling that their, their parents what to do. So it makes parents a little awkward when they get news about what their kids are actually doing. Because sometimes even the counselor who was told that your kid is a cyber bully, the parents don't get what's wrong with it because they didn't have the same experience as before. Not until the pictures are shown and everything is that, then the parents, they get, they go aghast, okay? So I think one of the problems here is not only telling the parents, but making them aware that technology has progressed this much and these are the possibilities that your kids are actually doing. We, we maximize our counselors when, when we hear of such things. Normally, we get, to, we get news about cyber bullies from kids who have been bullied or classmates who are bystanders. Other than that, the school does not get informed. Then interventions only happen as almost like a band-aid. The prevention thing is a little difficult for us to, to, to really actually prevent. Having said that, what we could tell parents is not only to monitor their kids, but actually to give talks on what's right and wrong. And, and it goes back to family upbringing. Now, since parents are mostly, and this is going to be the crisis when 40 million plus students do online learning, parents have no idea that they're actually in school. And teachers are not actually having an idea that the kids, even if they see their faces, are participating. Because as you said, windows and apps could be open. 20 apps could be open while they're attending school. But the most important thing here is actually a, the, the influence of adults. The most that adults could actually do right now is to give general statements on what's good and what's bad. And to give kids the discerning ability that good and bad might, you know, the situations where good and bad can be applied might evolve. But good is good and bad is bad. And that has to be consistent. And parents must not only tell their kids. Because kids get by osmosis what parents are actually doing by themselves. If the dad opens pornography what's, and, and tells the kid you can't do that, but the kid borrows the laptop of the dad and knows, looks at the history of what the dad has opened, and he takes it, takes it from there. So a little bit of consistency from the parents will really go a long way. Thank you. Before there was this idea of bridging the bridging the digital divide, when we before a few years back we had this generation of parents where they really had no idea of what technology is. But as parents are getting younger and younger today, the concept of digital divide is not as crucial because you have parents right now playing Mobile Legends, for example or playing PUBG, it's, it really boils down now when we say bridging the digital divide is, I guess it's, it's more from the perspective of having parents really equipping children with the life skills to survive whether and thrive, whether offline or online, which is a continuum anyways. So we should not dichotomize offline life and online lives of children. And and children really learn from their parents. So one fundamental prerequisite, of course, is that trusting relationship between the parent and the child. Yeah. 
can I, can uh, Miss Susan Mercado, I think, Susie Mercado had her hand up uh, a few minutes ago. Yes, thanks. Um, thank you very much to um, our colleagues from Korea and from our Philippine, our Philippine panel. I just want to um, pick up on what uh, Ace just said that actually, I, I really love the, the cartoon that you showed because what that story was telling is that children live in two worlds. They live in a virtual world and they live in a, in a real world. And this is just one flow. So as Bernie says, um, you know, you might have violence that moves from, from your real, from your natural world, I don't know what to call it, the natural world to the virtual Sick. world and backwards. So um, while uh, the cognitive dimension and being able to discern and use your head around this is very important. Uh, my sense is that the framing of this problem as cyber violence is very important because it is violence that you're dealing with, that, that, that very strong emotion or urge to do something that may hurt yourself or may hurt other people. And therefore the education needs to be targeting not just the mind, but also the ability yes. of the child to master emotion or to work with emotions or to accept or even embrace ugly emotions. Mm -hmm. So this is the part where I think parents could play a role, but certainly many parents are handicapped in that space as well. That's why their kids are online all the time. So, and, and I'm not exempt from that. You know, it's like, I, I know that uh, I have a teenager and um, his, online, his online activity can drive me crazy, but I have to try to work towards mastery of the emotions because that is where, that is where the, the line crosses. When we talk about boundaries, that's where the boundary crosses. When your emotions go out of control and you are not able to, not able to, uh, to then discern anymore. So, I'm sort of flipping, the, flipping this from the intervention point, flipping it around that it's not just about how people are thinking, but it's also how they're, how they're feeling. Now, having said that, I, I want to ask a little bit more of a question to our Korean colleagues about measurement. Because I said, cyber, as I said, cyber mm -hmm. violence is a good framing. And that framing can be used to define a public health problem. And, and that's... That's where I come from. I'm looking at this as a public health problem. And therefore, if we want to reduce it, we need to measure it. So I'd like to hear a little bit more because I got very impressed by, you know, this high level that went low with the interventions. Because if we want to see change, then we should be able to measure. And I don't know if you were using self-reported incidents or how, how you were doing that. Because I think measurement is going to be a very important component of using the different tools that ACE is developing, that our colleagues in schools are, are uh, putting forward in terms of prevention and education. But unless we can come up with the measurements, we will not know how effective these interventions are. Uh, the Blue Tree Foundation has started to survey on nationwide since 2001. Mm -hmm. And it's even 10 years earlier before the government has even started the nationwide survey. Yeah. It is very important to do a survey and let the cities know how serious and what's really going on. So I believe survey is the key point to let the society to be alarmed what's really going on. And um, we are planning to do develop a new um, measurement, uh, measurement research. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to renew our survey questionnaires. So okay. we are planning to do it. Mm -hmm. And I hope to do, I hope to really share it with worldwide level, but um, anyway, it's still meaningful to do a survey. Uh, even though you do not have enough equipment, you do not have enough 
survey questionnaire, it's okay. Just ask the students what's really going on, how serious it is, and what kind of media that were that you are using. Still, it's very meaningful. I think in that way. Thank you. <laughs> in the Philippines, uh, bullying, whether offline or offline or cyber, is defined by law as bullying or violence between learner to learner or student to student. And that legal definition of bullying, we are in the Philippines bounded to that because that is based on the definition of the law. In Korea, uh, do you have definitions like that, like clear-cut definitions of what is bullying as defined by legislation? Mm -hmm. We are uh, have a legislation that defines what is school violence, and it has not six subtypes of school violence, and one of them is cyberbullying. So yes, we do have a definition by legislation, what is cyberbullying, but uh, the thing is that school violence legislation is not that strict law. It's not for punishment. It's for, it's for educating students. So even the students are affected by cyber crime, you cannot really punish the perpetrators by the legislation of school violence because it's mainly focused on how to educate students. So we need other legislation to punishment, to, to punish the perpetrators. So that's the, but that's the problem we need to fix in Korean society. It parallels many countries' experiences in defining cyberbullying as a legislation because there are no universal definitions right now on the scope on how to define cyberbullying in terms of scope. Some countries define cyberbullying even if it involves adults to children, but in the Philippines, it's quite different legislation-wise. So we include any forms of violence that can hurt students to be um, physically or mentally affected. We, def we, we call it cyberbullying. So it's very, very um, large range of form of definition. So we cannot punish it by the definition of that kind of legislation. So we can educate them with that large range of legislation definition, but we cannot punish them. So it's kind of dilemma that we are facing too. Uh, 네, 한국에서는 그 주로 학교 폭력과 사이버 폭력이 어, 학교 폭력 예방 및 대처에 관한 법률에 명시가 되어 있습니다. 어, 여기서는 이제 사이버 따돌림이라고 얘기를 하는데요. 근데 이 사이버 따돌림은 어, 배, 어, 관계적 폭력을 이야기하는 단어이긴 한데 실제 내용은 어, 물리적 폭력을 가하는 걸로 좀 기결이 되어 있어서 어, 이거에 대한 용어 정리를 지금 어, 연구하고 있고요. 용어 정리를 연구를 하고 있고 일단 여기까지 먼저 해석해 주세요. 예. Um, in South Korea, cyber bullying, um, cyber violence is defined in the current act on the prevention of and countermeasures against violence in schools but it only entails uh, physical violence. Um, and this needs to be revised to include relational violence that rapidly takes a new form with wider use of smartphones. Uh, 네, all the laws are specified separately in various law, um, including like acts on promotion of information and communications network, utilization, etc. 그리고 대한민국에 다양한 부처들이 있는데 네, 부처마다 사이버 불링을 바라보는 관점이 조금씩 다릅니다. And the policies between the several ministries in Korea are also different. 네, 어떤 부처는 그 처벌과 선도에 좀 집중하고 있고요. Some of the ministries focus on just punishment. 네, 또 어떤 부처는 사이버 중독 및 중독에 대한 예방에 집중하는 부서도 있고. And some of the other ministries 
focus on recovery um, after online addiction. 예, 그리고 어떤 부처는 그 온라인 산업 육성에 집중하는 부서도 있습니다. And some of the other ministry focus on promoting online industries. 어, 그래서 한국에서도 이 사이버 폭력 문제를 전담할 부처에 대한 논의들이 이어지고 있고요. So in Korea, um, there are some debates what that we need to um, settle, settle the responsible ministries. 네, 그리고 이를 포함해서 그 변화하는 스마트폰 유형에 대한 폭력들을 포괄할 네, 새로운 법과 정책에 대한 논의도 끊임없이 이어지고 있는 상태입니다. And also continuously there are a public awareness that we need to um, target and um, be aware about the, um, to the um, change of the smartphone types. This is fascinating for me. I am a sociologist and for the last 50 years, I've been studying the nature of the real social world as we know it. Uh, and I, we, we used to think that the, the world of digital media was nothing but a small extension of the face-to-face -face world. Uh, but now I'm beginning to wonder whether the real social world as we know it is really just the extension of the digital world as the younger generation know it now. Uh, I say this because when I told my 19-year-old granddaughter that I'm participating in a webinar on cyberbullying, mm -hmm. she raised her eyebrows, eyebrows and, mm -hmm. and she said, but what would you know about the cyber world Grandpa, uh, you're not active in social media. Um, I, 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 I think, reflecting on that comment, I realized that I have explicitly avoided any participation in social media. And when we talk about the digital world, we're really talking about that section. I'm active on email, uh, but not on social media. I've explicitly avoided it. And that's where most of the cyberbullying, I believe, takes place. Um, uh, and, 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 and the world of social media is, I believe, far more complex than the real face-to-face -face world that we know. In which case, it may be very dangerous to, to, uh, to transpose the categories that we use in the face-to-face -face world and apply them uncritically to the digital, more specifically, the social, uh, the social media world. For example, uh, the whole nature of the bystander. Uh, the bystander might be easily identifiable in the face-to-face -face world that we know. Uh, the bystander is not so easily identifiable. In, in the cyber uh, social media world. Um, as a matter of fact, I think the focus of attention in social media might be more on the victim uh, rather than on the bully or on the bystander. Um, what uh, Dr. Madrid referred to earlier as the tsunami of, uh, of bullying is I think an ex a specific feature of, of bullying in, in, uh, in the cyber world, uh, which approximates what one might call uh, lynching. In, in other words, it, it's a kind of digital lynching where the one who started it may not be identifiable anymore. Uh, and the bystanders um, become, are, are totally anonymous and all the attention is focused on the victim. And in many instances, the victim may not immediately be identifiable as a victim, but rather as an offender. Uh, I have seen instances when uh, 
the victim became a victim only because he committed suicide. But before that tragic event, uh, the victim was not seen as a victim, but rather as an offender, uh, a violator of social, of social norms. Uh, so I was, I, I, I wanted to ask our Korean colleagues, in particular, uh, Mr. Kim, whether the Blue Tree Foundation has come up with a, a, a description of the basic features of the, of the digital world in which bullying, cyberbullying takes place, and what are the most important characteristics of that, of that digital world that we want our young people to navigate ethically and effectively and uh, with, uh, with a sense of citizenship. Uh, be, be, because before we can prescribe any form of intervention or how to make that world safe, we've got to know what that world is like. And I think uh, very few of us, of our generation, especially those who do not participate actively in, in the digital world, really know what's going on in that world. Uh, that's why I, <laughs> I am a little... Uh, <laughs> I'm a little uh, uh, diffident about participating in this because I'm not active on social media. And, and, and if you don't have a social media presence, you don't know the world that most of our young people inhabit. Uh, I, I, I guess that's, that's my question and comment, Emily. Thank you. The core factors or the key word that can describe digital world, I believe it's anonym anonymity. Mm -hmm. okay. People do not know uh, who is the perpetrators, who is the victims, or who is the three players, who is the bystanders. So the problem is that we can be wh whoever, anyone can do harm, anyone can uh, get hurt, and anyone can be a bystander. So uh, I think YouTube is one of the most commonly used platforms and it has a recommendation algorithm based platforms. And it exposes users to the contents that they are familiar with or the contents that they already agree with. And I think the problem of these recommended content would be it reinforced the user's personal prefer preferences, including political orientation. And you don't recognize that you are getting information that is already biased, but you don't get it. Mm -hmm. So um, I think anonymity and the recommended algorithm bias is something makes people only accept information within the narrative structure that it's already familiar with your community. So I think we need to really think about it. Um, I just wanted to take off from what Dr. Karangdang said about how important the family is and this is actually the first school where you can teach the right, uh, well the values of um, for protective behavior and pro-social values. Uh, in our clinic, we deal with bullies and also the ones being bullied. And on an individual level, we are able to do our work here. But aside from that, uh, part of our advocacy is to go out to uh, the communities and to the schools. So we partner with local government and with uh, the school educational institutions where we conduct workshops. And one tool that we have found very effective in promoting these pro-social behaviors uh, is using play therapy. Um, so I wanted to ask um, if you do something, if, is there something similar or how do you do this um, in your program, The Blue Elephant? Um, is there something similar? I'm also a play therapist okay. and I'm using play therapy to um, to, I think teaching parents how to really interact with their own child is very important. And 
um, play really is a strong tool that brings the keys into a, a recovery process. And in Blue Tree Foundation, we are using play therapy, but it's very intimate and personal tool to really uh, intervene. So we want play to be uh, partake into a program. So we are, you, you are, we are using games and we are using plays uh, into programs to really reach out yeah. uh, many different levels of adolescents. Because when, when we are reaching out um, adolescents like older than 10 years, they don't want to play. They think it's very cheesy and mm -hmm. it's childish. They, yeah. they don't want to get into it. So um, making it fun and still very charming is very important, I think. Yes, yes. Thank you. Can I add to the question of both Randy and uh, Rachel? Um, because um, what I want to say is uh, the question of Randy is, how do you navigate a world that you do not know? And so, and this is parent, and this is where most parents are. Even Ace is saying that parents are younger now, uh, but still overall, yeah. you know, when we talk about parents, uh, they still, do, they don't know this digital world. So how can they teach their children about a world that they do not know? And, and the children, are navigating this world on their own. So, so is there an educational uh, program also for parents uh, in, in, in the, with the Blue Tree Foundation so they will know more about the, the digital world and they can teach their children because we always say that, you know, the basis for everything is the home and the parents teaching the children. But if it's about something they don't know, they can teach about that, you know. So can I answer this too? Yes. <laughs> so I recently met a girl who is um, 14 years old, and she's not going to school. She wants to uh, live in a cyber world only. Okay. She, she wants to become somebody who is not her because she doesn't love herself. She doesn't have, she has lack of self, self con confidence. And she is so obsessed with um, game, online game and online space, online. Uh, she, so she's somebody who is popular in digital world, but she's nobody in the real school environment. So she wants to become somebody she is not. And her parents cannot understand that. Her parents is very well equipped with digital techniques. They know what is smartphones, what is all kind of applications. But the thing is that they didn't understand why she is so obsessed with digital world. That their parents didn't understand that she is seeking for um, social social impact or social influence on digital world. She needs it. So even though the generation has become changed or generation has become new, it is still the same that teenagers want attention. <laughs> and they're just getting it from digital world. And if parents didn't get it, even though they are very well aware of digital techniques, it's nonsense. They're only um, making a bigger gap between parents and child. So there goes some uh, psychological approach where parent education is really uh, working very well. Um, prepare them to understand, prepare them to understand their children, interact with their children, try to understand, try to respect their children. So even though the environment or digital environment is getting changed, I mean, the key factor is the same, still the same. Trying to be connected, trying to understand, trying to show them 
their love and attention is the key factor. Thank you. Thank you, Sunny. I, I appreciate that because in the prevention of high risk sexual behavior in the digital world, you do have to deal with the adolescent herself as an individual and her risky behavior also in the offline world. So as we've said, um, it doesn't change the understanding of the individual. I mean, the, the, whether it's offline or online, you're still de dealing with the same child and adolescent developmental issues. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the Fruko Kiri Chinsejo Yong Yang Chilmon Hishan and Dale. The Fruko Kiri mean Sajon a Ula in Gu Gijining Dego, Hakuro Chasagan and Hyunjang Gu, Kurgo Iku Yue, Sao Guguru, Setan Giru Yrojimida. So in um, our blue elephant business, um, business um, about to tell about uh, how we can um, how we can make up the prosocial capability. Um, there are three procedures we want we would like to share. First, it is um, pre online education. Second, it is visiting school education, and then the third is afterward. Um, um, the evaluation. Yeah, 사전교육에서는 그 부모님과 자녀가 학교에 오기 전에 The first one, um, the pre-online education, is to let the kids watch the animation so that they can easily understand what cyberbullying is. 학교로 찾아가는 교육은 네, 도덕성과 공감 능력을 향상하는 걸로 구성되어 있는데요. To tell about the visiting school education, it is it is um, there are two things we would like to focus on. The first thing is morality and the second one is sympathy. 어, 공감은 어, 팀 단위로 아이들이 체험 활동을 하면서 얻게 되고요. About the sympathy, we make groups each team and we um, focus on focus them to um, make the sympathy more. 우리를 통해 한다고 해도 될것 같아요. 아, 그리고 어, 도덕성은 어, 실제 있을 만한 사이버 폭력의 사례를 가지고. 아이들 간에 토론을 한번 해보는 과정을 겪는다. 네. Um, and about the morality, um, the student and the students actually talk about um, the actual, um, actual, um, actual case. Um, so they can talk about the dilemmas. 어 그래서 이, 이것들은 어, 이런 것을 통해서 이제 친사회적 역량을 향상시키기 위한 방식인데 So these are the ways to promote uh, the students' pro-social capability. 네, 한국의 문화적인 배경을 고려해서 어, 아, 여기까지 먼저 네. We also need to think about uh, in Korea's cultural um, factors. 네, 여섯 가지 덕목을 설정했다. 그게 정직, 약속, 책임, 배려, 소통, 아, 소유, 네, 정약용 특대도 정직, 약속, 책임, 배려, 용서, 소유. 네. We set up six factors of the procedural capability. Um, the six are honesty, trust, forgiveness, responsibility, consideration, and ownership. 네. 그리고 사후에는 어 네, 사이버 폭력 예방에 그 교육 효과가 지속될 수 있도록 어 아이들이 스스로 행동해 보는 방식으로 적용된다. 어 사후에는 부모님과 같이 행동해 볼수 있도록 도와준다. Lastly, after the education is over, we support the children to actually um actually do some activities with their family and parents. 네, 이런 것들을 궁극적으로 사이버 폭력을 알게 하고, 어, 그리고 사이버 폭력에 대한 피해를 느끼게 하고, 
어, 그리고 나는 사회 폭력 하지 말아야겠다고 신념을 갖게 하고 어, 이런 과정을 통해서 어, 어, 친구를 옆, 어, 옆에 있는 위험, 어, 위험에 해당한 친구들을 도와주는 친사회적 행동으로 발휘될 수 있도록 하는 것이 교육의 구성으로 되어 있다. So um, to sum up, um, this education let the students let them know what cyberbullying is and feel what cyberbullying is, and then finally to let them um, feel that they need to help the church, have to help the their colleagues around them. That's it. 이상일까요? 아, 하나 한 마디만 더 할게요. 네. 어, 이 사업은 삼성과의 10년 중장기 사업이고 모든 예산은 다 삼성에서 지원하고 푸른 나무 재단에서 운영을 한다라고 말씀해 주시고요. 어, 이거는 올해는 예방적 차원에서 초등학교 애들 먼저 하고 그 다음에 중학교 고등학교로 확대돼 나갈 예정이다라고 말씀해 주시면 될것 같아요. This 10-year business is um, Samsung Corporation. Samsung um, supports all the assets. of our business and um, and Blue Tree Foundation operates actually operates the business and um, for 10 years it will be developed step by step. I just ask a related question to that because I was going to ask about that nature of the partnership that you have with Kakao and uh, Samsung. I mean you spoke of the Samsung and Kakao is where it's posted is that does that include programs for parents because you i'm not familiar with cacao but you did say it was something like viber right so uh, i guess because i'm 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 it's a related question to scaling up the program and being able to sustain it um so the foundation btf creates the content creates the program in partnership with samsung and then yes. the implementation, the free online that's provided for by the platform of Kakao, is that what it is? Or? So, yes, yes, you're right. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's a 10 year program. Yes, with Samsung. And then does the Korean Department of Education, is it, are they part of that partnership for rolling it out in schools? No. Or how do you roll it out in schools? 자, 일단 이 사업은 어, 카카오랑 하는 사회 좋은 디지털 세상과 삼성과 함께하는 꿈꾸기로 나눠진다라고 먼저 말씀해 주세요. Okay, first we would, yeah, we would emphasize that um, these two are the separate business. Um, the first one, uh, the harmonious digital work with Kakao, and the secondly, the blue elephant with Samsung. 그러니까 두 사업 모두 어, 기업, 어, 카카오랑 기업과 삼성에서, 삼성이랑 기업에서 예산은 전부 지원을 하고, 어, 말씀드린 것처럼 푸른 나무 재단에 실행을 하고, 교육부는 이 사업에 대한 홍보와, 어, 교육, 그 학교에 쉽게 들어갈 수 있도록 관, 관통을 낮춰주는, 그리고 저, 적극적으로 협조해주는 역할을 한다. 라고 말씀해 주시면 될것 같아요. 예. Yeah. Um, but both of them, or uh, so the the corporates Samsung and Kakao supports the assets and what the Ministry of Education do does is that they promote uh, what we're doing and then they let us easier to get enter to the schools. 어, 그 프랑코끼리 같은 경우에는 부모 교육을 별도로 운영을 합니다. 어, 아까 말씀드린 것처럼 이게 사이버 폭력인지 아는 것부터 중요하고요. 그리고 부모님들이 어떠한 양육 태도를 가지느냐에 따라서 아이들의 디지털에 대한 시민 의식이 달라지기 때문에 부모 교육은 학교와 연계해서 별도로 교육을 진행하게 됩니다. To talk about the blue, uh, blue elephants, we we actually operate the parents' education because we we think that parenting attitudes from parents influence both the both the school violence and cyber violence so we actually operate the parents education 하나만 더 말씀드릴게요. 네, 프로코끼리의 문제 의식 중에 하나는 어, 사이버 폭력의 모든 이해 관계자가 함께 해야 된다는 겁니다. 그래서 가정에 있는 부모님, 그리고 아이들, 지역 사회, 
어, 그리고 교사분들 어, 모두를 다 포괄하는 개념이고 그뿐만 아니라 대중들에 대한 캠페인 활동도 같이 진행하게 됩니다. 그러니까 모든 이해관계를 포함한다고 얘기하면 될것 같아요. So what Blue Elephant really um, want to emphasize is that um, all the stakeholders here is important. We need to involve them. Um, the family, pa family, parents, education, society, instructors, and also all the um, nationwide. Um, we, are, we also planning to do some campaigns. So um, all the stakeholders need to focus on our, what we are doing. Thank you. Miss Emily, before we wrap up, uh, I just want to recognize some questions coming from Facebook, uh, although some of them were already answered in the course of our discussion. And uh, even with our Q&A tab, I think uh, some questions were already answered by our panelists. Uh, thank you for doing that, uh, Ace, uh, Father Fidel, and Dr. Bernie. Uh, there's just a question from Facebook. Uh, we are on Facebook Live, by the way. Uh, to Mr. Kim Jonki and maybe for the others, uh, Dr. Bernie and Ace, how how do you think we sh what do you think we should do to strengthen and promote a safe and caring space? Uh, then talking about compassion, uh, respect in in an online academic world. So I think the context is as uh, Philippines, the, the, the public schools will now open their own online uh, uh, learning. And how else can we promote safe, compassionate space in that world? Yes, uh, definitely the, the, the coming school year with DepEd's basic education learning continuity plan has put many schools in a very challenging situation. And with many preparations going on, uh, child safety is unfortunately something not at the forefront of preparations, just because we also have that basic assumption that kids would be safer because they would be staying at home. But this is far from the truth because as children go online, they will spend more time online and the schools should put more safeguards with regards to how they set up the coming school year. So uh, some of our, we have three suggestions actually to make schools in this coming school year a safer place for everyone. The first one is schools should consider uh, adapting their current policies on safety into the new normal. Because schools in the Philippines have many policies on safety already, but these were elaborated pre-COVID. And thus there should be certain adjustments with regards to school child protection policies in the new normal. The second one is that because the Department of Education has reduced the learning competencies uh, that needs to be taught, basically they have what they call the most essential learning competencies, child protection education should be mainstreamed into the milks or the most essential learning competencies. Pre-COVID, it, it has been a challenge to integrate child protection education in schools. And thus what many schools do is during special celebrations like Children's Month or Safer Internet Day, they do these special sessions with children. But right now, with schools being forced to reduce the, the number of subjects that they have to teach, uh, mainstreaming child protection education is very crucial. And then the third one, uh, last but not the least, is that for many children who disclose of violence, uh, who disclose experiences of violence, usually the first point of disclosure are teachers and then guidance counselors and schools because they are really trusted adults by children. However, with this coming school year, you have the situation wherein there would be high barriers for disclosure because students wouldn't have ready access to these school-based helplines. So schools have to adapt and think of ways on how to provide access to these helping individuals in this new normal. So schools have to adapt and utilize technology. For example, um, schools would have Facebook pages. And so schools have to think about innovative ways on how to open up their school pages to receive disclosures, but in a safe manner. 
and and these are challenges that schools have to study in the coming school year there's no precedent to this so we're all trying to figure out how to go about it but we have to start really somewhere so, uh, just to add to what ace is saying i i think that if you want if you look at the silver lining to this because uh, once all children have access to the online learning, etc., and their parents are not there at their back, maybe it might be easier to, for them to report. Uh, so long, uh, the school has that pathway where, where, where children can report uh, abuse online uh, you know, to, to, to the school. And then the school should have a proper response on how they will handle uh, these, these disclosures. So, so I, I, I think that the critical uh, thing here is that they should, the school should operationalize their school child protection committees and should have a pathway for reporting online. We in Korea, it's a difficult thing, but we have to do it as a basic thing. We to do to do 가장 학교 안전, 학생의 안전이 첫 번째이기 때문에 무리해서 학생들을 어, 오프라인으로 불러들이지 않고 가장 그 기본적으로 가능한 학생 단계적으로 불러들이고 있고 학교 와서도 가장 그 위생적으로 체온을 체크하고 마스크를 했는지 거리를 두게 하는 것을 지켜서 만약에 어, 한 학생이라도 어, 문제가 된다 그러면은. 어, 학교가 다시 크로스 되는 그런 음, 상황이 반복되고 있다. 그것이 우리 현재 학, 아, 학교에서 하는 거고 학교에 보내기 전에도 어, 먼저 뭐 일주일 전부터라도 그 아이가 무슨 문제가 없을지 가정에서도 체크를 하는 게 의무가 돼 있고 학교는 학교 내부로 세심해서 조금이라도 한 학생이 문제가 되면은 그 학교 가서 크로스 되기 때문에 그런 것들을 에, 지키고 있는 게. 첫 번째 우리가 정부가 하고 있는 일이다. 그 얘기 좀 해주세요. 네. <웃음> okay, so um, in Korea we are experiencing the same difficulties. So we would like to introduce um, some of the things we are keep doing. First, in um, the government, in Korea government, um, they are thinking the students' safety as their first primary thing. So um they doesn't really um call the students to come into the school offline um but just by step by step so um they actually <coughs> try to concentrate on the hygiene like um checking all the students temperature and spacing each other so if if one students um, have any problem with their um, <clears throat> hygiene, um, the, the school, the whole school gets closed. So um, it is important to check all the students um, even one week, one week earlier in their home so that they have, so that we can check if there are any students who has any problem with their um, <웃음> with their hygiene. 어, 그리고 또그 우리가 하고 있는 그 푸른 코끼리에 어떤 게 포함되어 있다고 그랬어요, 박주환? 어. 삭제, 답제. 어. 그리고 우리 그 얘기 해줘야 되겠다. 지금 지상이 네가 해줘라. 우리 푸른 코끼리 프로그램에는 그런 그 신고 기능이 탑재돼 있다. 그래서 온라인 상으로 문제가 있던 경우는 신, 어, 신고하도록 돼 있다. 아니 그건 지금 지금 사이버블링 얘기 아니야. 네. 그게 아니고 지금 여기 학교에서 지금 지금 그 코로나 때문에 한 얘기를 질문한 거 아니야? 포커스는 그지? 네. 그지. 그래서 그 얘기를 해주면 되는 것 같은데. 그래. 그리고 우리 그 얘기 좀 지상이 네가 해줘. 방금 벽전 센터 네. 얘기한 것들은. 우리 그 푸른 코끼리 프로그램 안에가 어? 그저 신고 기능을 들어가 있다. 자기가 내가 이런 어려움이 있다든가 그런. 그래서 그 우리가 사전에 문제를 어, 예방할 수 있도록 하고 있다. In the Blue Elephant mobile platform, mobile application, there are there is a function 
that anyone can report if he, if he or she has any problem so we can so that we can prevent any problem in advance just one question who takes care of the bullying problem in the school is it blue tree or the school who handles the bullying problem school personnel is responsible for the school violence happening in the school so when it is reported in your app you refer it to the school, school personnel who is in charge of yes that. but we do not, we are not a mandatory personnel we have spo school police officer in every school and every school school teachers are mandatory to report on school violence. And that's why there's a strong partnership between Blue Tree Foundation and the school personnel. You've trained a lot of teachers already. I think there was a question yes. from one of our audience. Do you con constantly train teachers uh, how to handle the bullies, the bullied, and even the, the bystanders? And if, uh, yeah, the bystanders. Can you get How often, in yeah, Sunny, uh, in terms of training teachers? Yes, it's very important. And since in South Korea, school violence is uh, legislated and every teacher must, must do something when school violence occurs. But most of them are not ready to respond to it. So they need desperately needing help. Teachers want help. And the legislation making teachers to get help because teachers must do something and they want help. And if we give them help, they accept it very gladly. So without legislation, teachers wouldn't want to be get help. They want to just handle with it by themselves. They just want to end it up. But if legislation is intervened, if the officer, school officer is following up the case, teachers need help and they want others to get intervened. Mm -hmm. And there is a legislation that supports that. Yes. In Korea. Yes. yes. Okay. So, I think so, there was a question yes. about legislation. But uh, as Ace mentioned, we already have a lot of legislation a lot of debt ed regulation no so ex but there's an exception i think there's a difference because in korea teachers are mandatory reporters they have to report they have, uh, they, they here uh they're not mandatory reporters mm -hmm. so if they do not report there is no punishment mm -hmm. whereas in korea there is punishment if they do not report mm -hmm. so but in the philippines difference. if if they do not report they might run into the trouble of being filed an administrative case against, but in reality, this seldom really happens for non-reporting, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes, because there's a difference between mandatory reporting in the law versus just a duty to report. You know, there's a big difference. This mm -hmm. is 어, 강제적으로 신고를 해야 되고 신고를 안 하면 처벌을 받게 돼 있고 교사를 위한 그리고 교장을 위한 교육이 수시로 법적으로 강제돼 그리고 학생들한테도 법에 의해서 1년에 두번이 학교 폭력의 신고라든가 학교 폭력 예방을 위한 교육을 받도록 법으로 강제화되어 있어요. 그래서 우리가 전 학교에 들어가서 그 교육을 하고 있고 교사들도 수시로 연수를 하고 있고 만약에 그게 학교가 그걸 감췄을 때는 교장이 처벌을 받아요. 교장을 전배시키고 딴 데로 그 얘기를 해 주세요. 이지상 씨. 네. So in Korea, um, as you all mentioned, um, it is mandatory to report for um, the teachers for the teachers. So if they doesn't report um, report about their, if their students are bullying, um, they get punished. So it is also in the law. And 
um, it is mandatory to take an education about uh, bullying twice a year for all the students and many times, several times for the instructors. And also the principal of the school gets punished if something happened, but if the teachers doesn't report. This is not in a very, you know, uh, very academic as some seminar or something, but we are explaining what we are doing now. Uh, how do we have it done before? So as far as we know, we can uh, tell you everything uh, regarding school violence or cyberbullying. Cyberbullying is now uh, very, you know, um, prevail in prevail in, in younger generation in Philippines also in Korea also same. But yeah. we have, we have to take a proper action. Otherwise, it will be uh, going on, you know, more serious yes. than before. So right. we are taking proper action, uh, cooperating with the Samsung Group or, uh, for, uh, for ten years. So we wanted to share our good programs to the neighbor countries, just like as your countries. Uh, it is our uh, hope and we have to do it because you are our good partners and uh, we are also same, you know, same uh, agony, uh, same difficulties for the young generation. So after uh, we are going on these all programs, we will uh, let you know what we are doing, what is the difficult problems, and uh, what we have to do for the future. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Kim, for that. Uh, we look forward to the partnership that we will build together with our uh, core of experts. We will now move to the, towards the end of this forum, and uh, may I request our moderator to give us sort of a, a highlights of our discussion. All right. Well, it's my, it's my privilege and my problem to try and synthesize uh, today's uh, very, very riveting and very rich discussion, as many have, have said. We have by no means exhausted the topic. If anything, we've barely begun to consider the, uh, you know, the, uh, <laughs> the very uh, grave uh, consequences of both the actions we take and the inactions that we take. Uh, first of all, the problem seems to be more widespread than most may be aware of, and it bears much more analysis than I think than we, it has been given so far. Uh, Dr. Bernie Madrid shared some important data, and this is stuck in my head now. 65% of students, both males and females, have experienced some sort of bullying or violence. Uh, that cultural norms have an effect on the acceptance of violence in the home. Uh, an important aspect to consider, especially for the Philippines. So there is a need to change the prevailing culture uh, and to replace it with something that, that works better. In our own context, we know the size of that problem in terms of the kind of, um, I guess, the, the examples uh, that, that we see around us. Um, Bullying has its roots in both offline and online contexts, and uh, the dynamics are similar, uh, as has been pointed out also by, by Ace and Father Fidel. Uh, Father Fidel also shared um, the insight that the majority of youth are digital citizens, and as such, they're exposed to, to many different cultures. And these different cultures may be incongruent to their own. Giving, a rise, giving rise to a host of conflicting behaviors and attitudes. And uh, as parents, we don't always get to wade in there and appreciate uh, the extent of these effects. Um, technology is both obviously a, bo a boon and a bane. Uh, the, the combination, however, this triad, powerful triad that, that Father Fidel also mentions, of parents, teachers, and students themselves can be a very powerful, uh, if they're working together, response to the problem. Clearly, uh, integrated and comprehensive problem, programs are an effective way to address the problem, as we saw with the Blue Tree Foundation. 
public and private institution must find ways to work together. Um, it takes integration, I think has been mentioned many times today, uh, and it is the direction that, uh, that has, uh, you know, repeatedly come up. So uh, integrating with others. It takes persistence, we have seen that. We need to link up with like-minded institutions and support organizations and groups. It took almost 20 years for the Blue Tree Foundation to move that needle from 20% to three. Uh, and they're by no means do they consider their work done because there is a new generation of children, there's a new generation of teachers constantly entering. Uh, and uh, we, just, we just need to keep up the uh, the uh, the programs, um, and of course, as we saw from Blue Tree, they went the full range from helplines to training to passing legislation and integrating, embedding the practices into the educational system. It, they they present to us a very uh, a very uh, powerful example of how things can work if all the elements work together. There are many lessons to take away and we hope new connections will be made today that will help us in the Philippines and in other countries to address this issue of cyberbullying. It is something that we need to do to restore harmony for the sake of our children and our future generations. And we know now that every individual has a responsibility, be they child, teacher, parent, there can be no bystanders. So we thank, uh, thank you so much for, for, you know, I have reams and reams of notes uh, and I'm sure everyone else does too. Perhaps this conversation can continue um, because there's still many questions, uh, many things that can be shared. Um, and we, we are so grateful uh, to everyone who was here today. Who, who gave of their time. Thank you so much, Mr. Kim. Uh, turning it over back to you, Chicklet. Thank you very much, Ms. Thank Evelyn. Thank you very much. Thank yeah, you. Thank, thank you, you so Mr. Much. Kim. Yes, yeah, please, uh, so just a much. few more minutes. We have very interesting video at the end that we want to share to you, our Korean friends, uh, produced okay. by uh, Stairway Foundation. We would like to thank uh, us, our speakers, uh, Dr. Madrid. Thank you very much, Father Fidel and Ace Deloy from the Philippines, of course, our very dear Magsaysay Award, Mr. Kim jong Ki. thank you so much for spending this afternoon with us, together with your colleagues, Sunny, uh, Jisang, and Juhan, thank you so much. Uh, this is the beginning of a different friendship that we want to cultivate with all the Blue Tree yeah. Foundation. Yeah. Uh, thank you to our forum partners. Uh, much. Thank you so much. And we'd like okay. to thank everyone who joined our webinar. Of course, our core of experts, Dr. Hani Karandang, Dr. Mm -hmm. Susi Mercado, Dr. Richie Parr, Ms. Dina Paterno, Dr. Oyi, and of course, Professor Rami David. Thank you for staying. And thank you to all of you, those who spend your afternoon with us, friends and su supporters of the Ramon Magsese Award Foundation, all the kindred souls who are working all very hard to protect the rights of children wherever you may be, whether at the comforts of your home or the safety of your office spaces. Thank you very much for attending. We have uh, participants from different schools and universities, media partners from the different local government agencies and other institutions, church-based groups as well. Thank you so much. We hope it was as enlightening and inspirational experience to all of you. Uh, at this point, allow me to thank the hardworking RMAF team who made this very first webinar possible, led by Tina Pavia, a project manager, ably assisted by Masaki, Kenny, and Emmy. Thank you. Our technical team, led, led by Victor Platon, Nino Santos, Noel Santos. Our graphics arti artist, Kyle Hayoge, to our communications unit, thank you very much, E.G., Hizon, Ira, Apple, and Kat. Special thanks to our president, our webinar moderator, Miss Emily Abrera. 
Ay, pa, Thank oh, you yeah. so much. This is thank our very so first much. attempt to do oh, yeah. this. But I think hey, Mira, 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 thank you. Thank, uh, thank yes. you very much. See you again. Tell so the finally, world. finally, as uh, your final takeaway, we will show this video. Uh, very informative, very creative, entertaining, produced by the group of Ace Deloy. We really hope that the young people will see this. So thank okay, you. Maraming so. salamat. Kam mm -hmm. habida. Kamsamita. <laughs> Mabuhay. Please stay Mabuhay. 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 Thank you very much. Stay for a few minutes, please, mm. and enjoy okay. the video. Tum, 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 tum. Presenting Dalira Escuela, a school to teach kids paano maging safe sa internet. Hello, mga bata. Hello, mga daliri na mga bata. Ako si Tom. And today, ang lesson natin ay cyberbullying. Who likes being on Facebook? Like nyo ba ang Facebook? Ano mga nila like nyo sa Facebook? Like ko mag-like! Pero minsan, nagiging down ako. Dahil sumasobra ang panunukso, nagiging bullying na. Ano pa ang difference ng tuksuhan sa bullying? Pag between friends, pwede tuksuhan lang. <laughs> Pero pag sumobra na, pag nakakasakit na ng damdamin, ang tawag dito ay cyberbullying. <laughs> Nagkakatuwaan lang, Tom. Siya kasi ang nagsimula. Siya talaga ang cyberbully. Huwag na magturuan. Next time na nasa Facebook o nasa internet, bago mag-type, isipin kung nakakasakit o may mapapahiya sa susubihin. Chismis. Sensitive o pribadong impormasyon tungkol sa iba. O ikaw ay nagpapanggap para mapasama ang taong ginagaya. At sadyang may hindi isama sa grupo. Thumbs down. Basta nakakasakit ng damdamin, cyberbullying ito. Cyberbully kayo! Ipopost ko nga yun! Huwag ganyan, Tom! Pag ginawa mo yan, bully ka rin. So anong dapat kong gawin? To stop bullying, remember, stop B. S. Screenshot the message para may proof pag sinumbong sa teachers or magulang. T. Tumigil mag-reply sa pangbubuli. O. Open up. Mag-open up o kausapin ang mga magulang o sino mang nakakatanda na pinagkakatiwalaan mo. P. Private. Ilagay sa private ang settings ng Facebook para hindi lahat makakakita. B. Block the bully online. O oh, mga bata, how do you stop bullying? Stop B. Mga bata, laging maging handa laban sa cyberbullying. Pwede itong mangyari sa emails or instant messages. Text messages, web pages or blogs, chat rooms, Facebook, Twitter at mga social media sites. Agree! Naintindihan niyo ba mga bata? Pwedeng magtawanan. Huwag lang magsakita ng damdamin. Like ko na ulit kayo! Like ko na ulit mag-internet at ang cyberbullying thumbs down! Sa Dalil Eskwela, learn how to be cyber safe. Wait, wait, wait! Ngayon, bago tayo umalis at mag-internet, mayroon tayong munting pagsusulit on how to be cyber safe. Let's put our learnings to the test. Ano ang pinagkaiba ng tuksuhan sa bullying? Pag binubuli, ano ang kailangan gawin? Ano ang ibig sabihin ng stop B? Sa Facebook lang ba pwede mabuli? Ang bullying ay pag nakakasakit ng damdamin. True or false? High five sa mga nakakuha ng tamang sagot! Remember kids, kahit gusto nyo lang mag-joke, ang cyberbullying ay nakakasakit. Turuan ang mga daliri na huwag kung ano-ano ang tinatype. Bye! Bye!